welcome back um here we are back in my garden again um my little nature connection corner uh, i just deleted my last video because i was just playing it back i just realized how much i i like i even moved my hands on my legs scratch my legs it's like a nervous habit so if you see me doing that put like a kind of like cross face in the um in the comments and um but i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna discipline myself to try not to do that um all these things that we're having to like be challenged by anyway so um nature connection um really really great for our well-being there's lots of scientific research lots of research papers out there now about how being in nature in a quality way um can reduce uh, feelings of stress um can be really supportive of your mental health alleviating um some of aspects of depression um you get a good endorphin boost in nature um but some of the evidence is showing that it's not just about your contact in nature like as in going for a walk in nature but it's actually deepening finding ways to actually deepen your connection with nature um so we've been doing uh well, we've been doing a few of, uh, of that through a mindfulness practice so using your senses to connect you to nature what you can hear and smell and taste and and feel like with the wind and the sun on your skin and things like that so that kind of using your senses to connect you to nature is one pathway in um there's another pathway which is um through things like gardening and horticulture projects uh, so you actually get kind of getting your hands really in the soil um you can um do things like um there's been a lot of forest school kind of coming up where which isn't necessarily just for children but um it's again about learning bushcrafty type skills and nature-based um, sort of uh, coppicing type you know woodwork practices uh, that, those kind of things and also um learning about nature so i thought we'd have a go at that one today so yesterday i went out for a woodland walk for my exercise and um just um asked the trees to to allow me to have one of their leaves to do a little bit of a fun tree identification and i found a brilliant app um it's a woodland trust um identify your tree app so obviously we can't be encouraging you to go outside and find trees but if you do go past trees on your everyday kind of walk so obviously it's something that perhaps you can gen yourself up for for when we can get back outside again um so yeah, we're going to try a little tree identification uh, quiz today to deepen your nature connection. So here we go. First, oh, by the way, one of the schoolgirl errors I made was to put them in the fridge overnight, kind of thinking that will keep them chilled. But actually, it's kind of made some of the leaves go quite floppy. <laughs> so we'll just like bear with me, see how this goes. So here is your first tree to work out what this is. Um, so here's the leaf, hang on, how's that looking, here's a leaf, so it's kind of like that, and it has these buds forming when it's just about to uh, come into leaf, what they call leaf burst. So you'll start to return, you can post it in the comments. Um, um, but I'll share with you the answers at the end, but see if you know this one. Does that look all right? Okay. Tree number two. Is this one? And these are our common woodland trees. This one comes in different colours. And as you can tell, this might give you a bit of a clue. But this is a nice coppery colour. So see if you can tell us what that uh, leaf belongs to. Number three, is this still a pretty one? This is kind of on a droopy tree that has a nice kind of, so I think it has, to me it has like a kind of a little wistful habit. Um, yeah, see if you know what that one is. This one, quite popular. You can see it's actually got a little um, flower stalk there as well. And lots of things get made from this, uh, this tree, mainly from the, from the, from the buds of the, uh, the flowers. It has a funny smell, weird smell. Okay. So 
this one. Hopefully this is quite an easy one to work out. Oh yeah. There's lots of, this has really pretty blossom at this time of year. If you know that. And also ha this has uh, quite good medicinal properties as well. Right, this one, this one kind of didn't survive the fridge experience very well. Um, see if I can unfold it a bit. There you go. Squirrels like this. Not the leaves, but another bit of it. So I don't know if that's a bit of a clue. Um, so yeah, very common um, woodland UK tree, this one. I'm going to have a little break there about halfway through and um, the other thing I've really got into is learning a bit more about foraging and that's another way of really great nature connection. So here's my cup of tea, my teapot and these are cleavers, uh, sticky buds. So um, yeah, I'm just going to pop them into this water and they're full, cleavers are full of um, minerals and vitamins and it's a really good cleanse. So yeah, I find, um, you know, for using things like nettles for, you know, anything just simply that you can put into leaves in tea, lemon balm, nettles, cleavers, just in some warm water, makes a lovely cup of tea. So it's getting hot out here now, so I'm gonna enjoy that. Right, back to your tree test. Next one, giving you a little easy one here. So an evergreen that we see all year round. I'm not going to give you too much time on that one because you know that one probably. Um, well, this one might be a bit tricky. Again, a nice little dainty one with really nice um, red berries in the summer. I'm not going to do that one. Just okay, bit of a favourite. And actually, when we were walking in the woods yesterday, we realised that. Um, the woods are mainly like made up of these uh, where I am or versions of these there's two types actually that are quite similar um, yeah see if you can get that one and then this little biggie he's really survived not really survived the fridge experience very well either but this is a really big leaf beautiful at the moment as the, um, the flowers are just emerging they look a bit like um, I think they look like sort of frothy candles on the trees. So yeah, let us know if you know that one. And last but not least, another evergreen, often found in churchyards. So, oh, get my tea. So <clears throat> hopefully that might have tested your knowledge a little bit on what you know about British woodland. And as I say, I'm going to post a link to um, a tree app. And um, oh yeah, and also just a very simple crib sheet that you can use um, that I saw also with the Woodland Trust. So we'll post that in the um, on the page as well. And yeah, so when if if you go through woods on your on your exercise walk or ready for when we can go out again. Um, deepening your connection to nature through knowledge um so yeah knowledge of trees birds oh yeah did anyone have any any birds extra birds no one none have come to my bird feeder actually that i've noticed but um yeah i've had i did have a couple of magpies in the garden but i think it was because they were really hot and coming to the well, i've got a little pond because they're not usually around i've seen seagulls and i've never seen seagulls here um not in my garden thankfully and um yeah a few quite a lot of blackbirds um i've seen a robin and uh, one i need to look up which i think is some kind of tit maybe like cold tit or something like that had a really pretty red head so if anyone knows what that is or it might be a finch type of finch so if anyone knows um what that might be that would be really helpful um i did post them um, a link to some uh, common bird um bird british bird types and bird song so if you're uh, yeah if you want to, to um, tune into some 
bird song, um, then that RSPB um, link might be quite useful to you. Anyway, so cheers. Here's my nice um, cleaver tea. Oh, really refreshing. And we'll leave you with the crib sheet um, for the leaves. So, and we're back with Pictionary at 1.45. Thank you.